Good day, Miracle Swingers. Today I have a video for you where I'm gonna hit my driver with a new shaft. I have a new shaft in here, Fujikura. Let's see here, 55 Stiff Vista Pro. This is 44 and a half inches, okay? I did have a long shaft. It was about 46 inches before. And I told you guys I'm hitting these crazy, crazy bombs. I'm trying to keep up with these guys who are swinging like 120 miles an hour. And I'll tell you, I did hit some of the longest drives I've ever hit in my life. But at this point in my swing evolution, I want to hit more fairways. So my buddy Curtis down in Tampa, shout out to you. He let me swing his 44 and a half inch driver. My old Hogan driver used to be 44 and a half inches. I went back to that length and I am seeing straighter drives. That's very, very good. So we're going to break down my driver swing. I'm going to show you some details from it that you might not be aware of until I slow it down and, and put some things on there for you to check out. I want to thank my main man, Greg. He was asking me like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if you had Shot Tracer on all those shots? But my Shot Tracer app is on my phone and it was very labor intensive just to do one swing. But I got the Shot Tracer Pro for my Mac and now I'm able to do more videos of swings with shot tracer a little bit quicker so that's good for all you viewers out there so next up my short game i've been working on my short game every day today i'm going to go after this video is finished every day i'm having big breakthroughs they haven't shown up on the course yet i'm looking forward to six weeks two months before i really start to see the changes ingrained i'm putting better than ever I'm gaining serious, serious confidence with my wand. And I think that it's going to make a big difference. And the way that I know for sure is the putts feel better. They feel more solid and they're rolling straighter. I have that line on my ball that I use and I can just see that thing tracking. Now, guys, if you want personal instruction on the over the top miracle swing, all the things I'm focused on, in my short game practice, wedges and putting, come on out to the MSE Intensive, which is September 3rd and 4th. I'm going to have one guest I already know, which is my friend Greg Hood, who was the director of tour operations for the Ben Hogan Golf Company in the 1980s. He worked with Lanny Watkins, Tom Kite, all of those guys, and he's a Class A teaching professional that worked for Jim McLean. And what's even cooler is he's in 100% on my over-the-top golf swing. So come on out for that. And definitely, guys, get the over-the-top miracle swing or better yet, pick up MSC TV. A year is still just $99. So that's just $8.33 a month. That's the best deal in the world for elite-level golf instruction because my golf game is changing. I hope yours is too. <laughs> And I want to leave you with one thought before we get into this driver video. There's a lot of times in my life when I didn't believe in myself on the golf course, but now I do. If you feel that way, I want you to know one thing's for certain. I believe in you. And the reason why I do is because I was able to make the change myself. And I know that you're capable of doing it too. So I love all you guys out there. Hit them long and hit them straight. All right, guys, so we're going to take a look at my swing with this 44 and a half inch shaft. And I like to just give you a walk in for the very first swing so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm tugging on my sleeves and keeping my upper arms connected. This is kind of a move I picked up from John Levitt. And right out the gates, I hit a nice, long, high straight drive. So. So that was pretty good. There's one I pounded, but just turned it over just slightly. Now I grabbed 10 golf balls that I was going to do this with. And uh, this is just like getting to know this driver, you know, like how does it feel? How does it want to release? Uh, that one I cut a little bit. One of the best drives, I couldn't quite get this shot tracer to work properly. I don't know why. It may have been reading the T. But here I change the angle up a little bit. 
and I'm starting to get the feel for this thing. Just dropping my right elbow under and pounding it. So that one I turned over a little bit. So none of these drives would be be bad. Maybe a couple of them might be in the rough, but but those balls like that are, are just going to be right in the fairway and it's going to be time for a scoring opportunity. So I want to take a look at this drive for a second. We can zero in on it a little bit closer. So I'm going to slow it down here. Now I want to point something out to you about this drive. The goal I had was to stay tall through my transition. So I have a tendency to squat a lot in my transition. Generally the head will dip a little on the way back and then a little more on the way down. And uh, Jack Nicklaus was one of the few golfers who maintained the height of his head all the way through his backswing. So I feel like I'm stretching up high going back and you'll see that high left toe also kind of like Jack in an effort to maintain my height. So this next swing, I'm going to put a handy little box around my head so we can take a look at how well I'm doing at maintaining my height. So at this point, I'm ready to pull the club back nice and tall. I shift into my right side. And we're going to see that I maintain my level better than I do normally, but as I reach the top of my backswing, I'm going to be moving to my lead side, and I'm going to begin to load into the ground. So even though I feel like I'm staying super tall, as soon as that left heel starts to drop down, I'm going to get lower. Now we're going to see the second lowering, as Wayne D. Francesco calls it, and we're going to see me really begin to use ground forces to create my turn. So at this point, my head has dropped about as far as it's going to. That's probably a four or five inch drop, I would estimate. But it's pretty healthy, but you can see the flex in my legs as I begin to rotate. My left leg is driving the left hip backwards as I deliver the club from underneath. I've got a square club face, and that ball is just going to be smoked right up the center. So now I wanted to switch and give you a look at a different swing. Now this I found this interesting. This little cut shot that I hit, the reason why I find it interesting is because I want to talk about the technique of these drivers. Now the main reason I switched to this 44 and a half inch driver shaft is because I want to hit more fairways and my long driver boy I'll tell you I, I told you guys stories about hitting some like 350 yards but you know those are anomalies those are a little wind dated those are with a little downhill but I mean it's it's thrilling to hit a ball that far I'm not gonna lie to you but I feel like my average drive with this driver is going to be perhaps even longer, but it's definitely going to be straighter. So I want to watch impact with you guys and show you that I catch this on the heel. That's what gives me that little cut, but watch what happens to the face. You see that toe flip over? So what happened there is when you catch the ball on the heel, it's going to cause that gear effect of that face to roll over. Now the face was fairly square at impact, but it's the gear effect on that heel that makes the toe roll over. And you can see me kind of wrestling with the club as I go into my follow through, but with this twist face technology, it's pretty crazy what these drivers can do. So now I want to compare that with a better swing. So that's, that's a long, hard ball right there. Dead center, square, club face. Mm. So let's take a look at this uh, frame by frame as I go into slow-mo mode here. 
you'll see that I'm hovering the club head. I highly recommend you guys get used to this. It's, it's an important move that Nicholas and many of the best drivers of the golf ball always did. I take the club inside and up, lift my lead heel. Again, super high because this is, this is Nick Clausian, I guess you could say. But we're going to see that I'm going to deliver the club right on target. That looks like it's going to come out of center face. And there is almost no face rotation through the hit. So all that energy is going into the back of that golf ball as it takes off for the back fence. So I'm hitting these balls over 280. Um, the back fence is 260. And so I'm plenty happy with it. I did get to play my first round yesterday with this club. And my solid hits were where my 45 and our 46 inch driver normally wound up. So I, I'm going to stick with this and I'm going to keep you guys clued in because I think that if I start hitting more fairways, improved my short game, hopefully my scores are going to drop. So guys, get MSE TV. Come out to the next MSE Intensive September 3rd and 4th. And until the next time, hit them long and hit them straight. Do you have trouble slicing the golf ball? How many times have you heard people tell you, you're swinging over the top, that's your problem? What if I told you the natural motion of swinging over the top is actually the best way to hit the golf ball? Would you think I'm crazy? Well, I'm here today to tell you about the over the top miracle. The best part is it's a natural motion based on a throw. I worked, what I worked on there was trying to get as far back as I could inside, tried to stay down through the ball. Do you think uh, you picked up some yardage since we've been working oh, on this it, stuff? On the driver, at least 50 to 60 yards. It's dynamite. It's crazy. You don't have to be stuck with an over-the-top slice. That's why I created the new video, The Over-the-Top Miracle. Transform your game with the over-the-top miracle swing at myswingevolution.com.